The Python data model describes an API for interacting between Python and your objects. But in fact, the data model is more than that. You might wonder where the name data model comes from. Traditional data models describe elements of data and their relation to each other. In Python, the data model is the name of chapter 3 in the Python documentation. This chapter explains the Python API at a high level and is roughly split into three parts. 1. Standard types Here you find a list of built-in types like the non-type, number types, sequences, sets and mappings. It also describes callable types like built-in functions and user-defined functions. 2. Special methods. Special methods allow your objects to emulate built-in types. It allows you to create objects that behave like sequences, mappings, numeric types and context managers. 3. Coroutines. Here you find info about async and await. In this course we mainly look at special methods. The goal of these methods is to implement custom behavior in objects with respect to language operators. In other words, it makes your objects behave like sequences, mappings, numeric types, and so on. When an object behaves like a built-in type, we say it emulates that built-in type. So now we know that the data model is chapter 3 in the Python documentation that it explains standard types, special methods and coroutines and that the scope of this course is special methods. From now on, when I talk about the data model, I mean the part about special methods. That is the part that allows us to let custom objects emulate built-in types. Let me show you something. This is the Python standard library that is installed when you install Python. Your code uses the Python standard library. For example, you can create a list by using square brackets. Python creates a list object and you can interact with the list. For example, you can print the list. Now you want to know the length of the list. You use the len function and pass list a. Python returns a number. Our list was empty, so the length is 0. And this is where it gets really interesting. Why does this work? How does the len function know what to do with a list object? This is where the Python data model comes in. The Python data model describes how the Python language interacts with objects. On the one hand you have the Python language features. They include operators, iterators, indexers and many more. On the other hand there are objects. Some of them come with Python, some of them are written by others and some of them are instances of classes written by you. We need an API that formalizes how objects interact with Python's language features. I'll give you a couple of examples. How can an object return a value when the built-in function len is called? How should your object return elements when iterated over with a for loop? What should happen if you add two custom objects together? Or what should an object return when it is printed? There are many language features in Python and you will learn how to support these features in your classes. There are many types of interaction between Python and your objects and these are the ones we are going to look at. You will learn how to translate built-in function calls to method calls in your objects. You will learn how operator overloading works in Python. You will see how iteration and indexing translate to code in your objects. 
Another interesting language construct is how to instantiate and initialize your objects. And you will see how a context manager works. To support these language features, all you need to do is implement special methods in your objects. A special method looks like this. Special methods have leading and trailing double underscores. You can say this is special method string, or you can call it dunder string. Dunder stands for double underscore. Special methods and dunder methods are the same things in this course. Whenever you want to support a language feature in your objects, you have to implement one or more special methods in your code. Calling the built-in function len translates to dunderlen. Getting an element at an index requires dunder get item. To support a for loop, you have to implement two special methods, dunder iter and dunder next. Imagine you are the user of this class. You don't have to know about the implementation details. If you want to loop over its items, just use a for loop. It's time to code. Have another look at Dunderstring. Why don't we start with this one?